What's going on ladies and gentlemen? This is Matthew Putterman. We're back at it again today with MMA Today. I'm alongside UFC's newest flyweight contender, Elias Garcia. Elias, how you doing today, man? It's good how to are see you, brother. Good, good, good. 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 Well, he'll be fighting Mark De La Rosa on July 14th at UFC Fight Night Boise. Well, first off, let's talk a little bit about the Dana White's looking for a fight. So how did you even accommodate that fight? How did you even get that fight? Uh, well, got the fight uh, a week before it was supposed to happen. Um, they just threw it out there. They're like, would you like to fight um, Shorty? Didn't go through. They uh, replaced me with uh, Adam Antolin. And then uh, Shorty got hurt or something, cutting weight. and. Uh, they replaced me with, uh, you know, for that fight and got the fight on four days notice the Monday after. Flew out to Cabo on Tuesday and won the contract on Thursday. So that's crazy. Good. If you haven't seen the episode yet, he just fought on the new season, I believe, season three, episode one of the Dana White's looking for a fight, and uh, he had a first round KO. Dana actually had to leave early because something was bothering him with his ear. He has an ear problem, so. Uh, do you wish you would have fought in front of Dana? Do you really like want to be able to want to be able to shake his hand right away and be like, I want, this, is, "This is what I want to do my whole life. This is my this is my dream to meet you and all that." Or? I mean, of course, man. Of course, I wanted to fight in front of Dana White, man. It would have been great. Um, all that matters though is that I won that contract, and yeah, I know he saw the fight after, and uh, he's gonna get to see me fight eventually. You know, I mean, he may not be at my fight this next one either, so yeah. it's like. Uh, I know he's gonna see it, and eventually I'm just gonna work my way up, and I'm, you know, everyone's gonna see it, and the world's gonna see it, so it doesn't really matter to me. Definitely. Well, if you guys don't know, Eli is actually the cousin of Anthony and Sergio Pettis. Does that put any pressure on you? Any ad added pressure to you at all, just because of what Anthony's done, like the first guy in the box of Wheaties, all that kind of fun stuff? And does that put any extra pressure on you? I mean. There's always been the pressure of like, oh, people want to, you know, beat me because of my cousins and they want to take my record, all that stuff. But I mean, any pressure that, uh, that is there is that it's the pressure I put on myself. Um, I can't let it get to me. They're not the ones fighting for me, you know what I mean? They're not going to jump in the cage and save me if, uh, if anything happens. So, uh, I mean, like I said, all the pressure that, that's there is the one I put, uh, the pressure I put on myself. So, you know, pretty much it's always been there, though. Definitely. Well, let's talk about your opponent, Mark De La Rosa. What do you think of him as an opponent? Oh man, he's a great opponent. Tough young kid, man. I mean, uh, he's coming off his first loss and as a professional, not even just in the UFC. Hasn't got that UFC win yet, so I know he's uh, he's out there training. He's hungry and uh, he's got a family to feed, man. And uh, I believe this is his first fight at flyweight, so I know he's uh, he's trying to make that new cut and uh, that new weight class. So I know he's coming out guns blazing for this one, man. And uh, just two hung, uh, young, hungry kids, man. We're out, you know, in each other's way, and uh, I definitely respect the guy, man. He's a respectable opponent, and I res like I respect all my opponents, but uh, definitely uh, looking forward to fighting this guy. Did you see his fight with Tim Elliott, and what did you think of his performance? Obviously, he lost, but what did you think of his performance? Oh, uh, I definitely, uh, I definitely seen his strengths in that uh, that fight. Even though he lost, he had really good jiu-jitsu, really good transitions. Almost caught Tim Elliott in an armbar right at the beginning. Um, you know, his gas tank wasn't there. Obviously, he took the fight on two weeks' notice, and I'm, I'm not here to be like, oh, I know this, that, or that. You know, I definitely took my fight on four days' notice. You know, it was, it, it was just my time at the, at the time to get my contract, so I know it's going to be different. I can't expect the, the same Mark De La Rosa to come out. Like I said, it's his first loss as a professional. He didn't win his UFC debut. He's got a lot to prove, you know. And he's got, like I said, he's got a family to feed. His wife's fighting this week. Uh, at the UFC International Fight Week. I know she's fighting on one of the cards there. So, uh, you know, he's got a lot of pressure coming into this fight and uh, I'm gonna capitalize on it, man. So I definitely uh, definitely see this fight going my way and I definitely see it gonna be in a good fight. Definitely, well, you just led me into it. What is your prediction for this fight against Mark? Predictions? Oh, man. Uh, I never really try to predict anything in a fight, man. It's, uh, I like to be there in the moment, you know, whether it's a, a sub, a knockout, or a decision, I'm gonna win. I see myself winning. You know, I know, like I said, I know he's gonna be coming out tough. I know he's gonna be in shape. He's gonna be ready. He's just coming off that loss. And like I said, he's got a family, man. So like this dude's got way more motivation to, to kick my ass than, you know, than me just trying to chase my dreams. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, it's gonna be a good one though. I know it's gonna be high, high pace and exciting and, and hopefully I get a bonus out of it. So that's what's up, that's what's up. Well, let's talk a little bit on side of fighting. Like, well, first of all, how did you even get into fighting? Like, what really led you to it? Um, well, I was 12 years old, you know, same old 12 year old kid in California, just enjoying life, good weather, all that. Uh, come across Spike TV's uh, premiere of uh, The Ultimate Fighter 1, 
you know, Diego Sanchez, Kenny Florin, Forrest Griffin, all those, all those legends, and uh, fell in love with the sport from there on, and uh, told myself after the finale, I'm like, you know what, I want to do this one day, I want to do this. Didn't know that the, the dream was going to stop for a little bit, you know, I go to high school, you know, didn't train, didn't start any martial arts, nothing like that, and as soon as I graduated high school, I was like, you know what, I'm going to run with this, I'm going to give it a shot, and uh, it's paid off, man, it's paid off a lot, so uh, it's definitely how I got in, and then uh, just so happens that my cousins happen to be, you know, two badass fighters, and uh, one of them was the champion, and the other one's on his way of coming up to being the champion, too, so it's, uh, they've definitely paved the way for me, and uh, I, I owe a lot of the credit to them, so Sergio and Anthony got me, obviously, into Dukes, and and in, you know, in the got me a little bit of the light, better than a lot of amateurs. You know, I had a really good amateur career. I had sponsors. I was getting paid, so it, it's uh, it's definitely a blessing. I have it easier than most, so it's like it's kind of expected for me to make it. So that I guess that's where the pressure. I feel like that's where yeah. most of my pressure came on is that people expected me to make it. But uh, like I said, man, they can't fight for me. They can't they can't win my fights for me. All the work that I put in is because of me and my desire. So. Definitely, uh, like I said, I credit them to, to get me in, but uh, I have to credit myself to actually doing it. So, Definitely. yeah. So you train at Rufus Sport. What do you think of the team as a whole, and uh, how do you like working with Duke? Oh man, I love it, dude. Uh, get to watch sparring the other day, and man, I just realized like everyone on the team is a killer. Um, our even our weakest. I mean, I don't even know. I can't even say who our weakest uh, team member is, man. We're all. We're all great in different uh, aspects, whether it be jiu-jitsu, conditioning, or kickboxing. We all have our strengths, and I'm really, really happy to be a part of this team. Um, I've gone and I've moved back to California over the couple years. Uh, I've trained a team alpha male and kings MMA, and those are really great gyms. I, you know, I grew a lot, learned a lot from those, but there was just something missing. The structure that I have here and the the leadership I have here is definitely something that is. It's different, and like I said, I, I, I grew up in California, man, and everyone asks me that all the time, like, why would you leave beautiful California? I'm like, Rufus Sport is that reason, man. There is, there's no other reason I'm here. Um, this gym is that great, and Duke's leadership is just, it's amazing, man. He's made such a positive impact on my life, and I, I really, truly appreciate Duke as a, a martial artist and as, as a friend, too, man. And, you know, our relationship's grown over the years. I mean, everyone knows how, you know, Duke is, and, and how his teaching is and people think he, he can be rough sometimes but it's all I love man so I just had a I had to grow up myself and understand that it's he truly cares so I, I really appreciate my coach and, and, and my teammates man definitely well let's talk a little bit outside of fighting what are some things you like to do outside of fighting man? well I mean everyone knows me if I'm not fighting people I'm fighting fish so <laughs> you know what I mean I, I'm a big fisherman um, I enjoy hanging out with my dog skating I'm not doing tricks just riding around on my board I wish I could do some <laughs> tricks man I've always wanted to be a skater yeah just so uh, always scared to fall so uh, if I'm not fishing I'm, I'm hanging out with my dog or I'm hanging out with Serge man just chill chill guy man I'm not really into material things I'm not a uh, I'm not going out clubbing I'm not uh, trying to go out and buy shit you know I'm just doing me definitely well, let's, uh, is, it, would you, is there anything you want to say to Mark at all? Is there something you want to tell him? Uh, I mean, not really, man. I mean, I, like, I respect you, bro. I respect you as a martial artist and what you're doing. And uh, like you told me, bro, we're just in each other's ways of uh, each other's dreams, man. And uh, I respect you, bro, and I can't wait to fight you next week. Definitely. Well, is there uh, any sponsors you want to give a shout out to uh, at this moment? Definitely. Uh, Pure Spectrum, man. They hooked me up this uh, this camp, CBD, bro. I firm believer in CBD now bro it's a good recovery and uh, helps you know re uh, relieve tension in my neck and everything and uh, Max Customs you know my boy Matt uh, Pat Magdaleno making my fishing rods uh, I broke two of them already man $500 rods definitely acting like a child <laughs> um, looking to get another one add another one to my uh, to my collection after this fight so uh, definitely Max Customs uh, and yeah pretty much that's about it right now definitely well this is Matthew Putterman signing out with MMA today Eli, thank you so much for joining us today. You, you guys have a good rest of the week. Tune in next week. We'll have another one. Stay blessed. Have a great week. We'll see you later.